Hey guys, it's Miss Frederick, and today I am going to be reading If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They're awfully old fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage, I'd unlock every pin, let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beast of m a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left, five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight. This zookeeper, new keeper Gerald's quite keen. That, that's the gall darndest lion I ever have seen. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of a hen who roosts in another hen's top knot, and then another one who roosts in the top knot of his, and another in his, and another in his, and so forth, and upward and onward. Gee whiz. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised they'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come. Where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go to places quite out of the way. You have to go to places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my Skeagle mobile. I'll bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo McGrew zoo will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains, Zamba Matant, with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant, and capture a fine fluffy bird called a bustard, who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard, and also a very fine beast called a flustered, who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch them in caves, and I'll catch them in brooks, I'll catch them in crannies, I'll catch them in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch them in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Mata Fapata Fapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beast that you never saw ever. I'll load up five boats with a family of jotes whose feet are like cows, but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs, but have voices like goats expecting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wild of Nantucket and capture a family of lux in a bucket. Then people will say, now I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild and captures them meek. He captures them slim and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one cute, I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he could sleep in your bed if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. And speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to another. With horns are so mixed they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end, and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled. He's never yet found. His horns are hers and the other way around. 
I'll capture them fat uh, and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scraggle foot mulligatawny. A high stepping animal fast as the wind from the blistering sands of the desert of Zend. The beast is the beast that the brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. The mulligatawny is fine for my zoo and so is the chieftain. I'll bring back one too. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called an iota, but I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, now by thunder, this new grew, Mizzou grew, is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but Still in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those are the ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thorough, whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African Isle of Yurka and bring back a tizzled topped tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach on the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a fellow who has a propeller for rising and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe. With X's that win and with zeros that lose, he'll look mighty good in this zoo of McGrews. I'll bring back a gusset, a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but with their names are, I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave of Khartoum lives a beast called a match that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish and that's just his taste. Three chicken croquettes made of library paste. Then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled with spice, then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feast, but that's how the new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets feast. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Tups near the river of Knops and I'll bring back an ops. A sort of kind of thingamabops who only eats rhubarb and corn on the cost. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mop. McGrew, they will say, does a wonderful job. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there'll be a Russian Poloski whose head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my zoo ski, McGrew ski. Then the whole town will gasp why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what the young fellow will do. And then just to show them, I'll sail to Katru and bring back an itch kit, a prip, a prue, a nurkle, a nerd, and a seersucker too. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hippo no Hungus and bring back a flock of wild Bippa no Bungus. The Bippo no Bungus from Hippo no, Monk, no Hungus are better than those down in Dippo no Dungus. 
and smarter than those out in Nippo No Nungus, and that's why I'll catch catch them in Hippo No Hungus. Instead of those other in Nungus and Dungus, and people will say when they see these bit bounding, the zookeeper new keeper simply astounding he travels so far that you think he would drop when do you suppose this young fellow will stop stop well i should but i won't stop until i've captured a fizza mawiza medill the world's biggest bird from the island of Gurk, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say, young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGrewskis. Wow, they're all cheer. What's this zoo must be worth? It's the gall darndest zoo on the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo.